Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to talk about companion planting, and we'd like to thank Jennifer Poet for liking and sharing the podcast. And if you've downloaded our latest ebook, Book 16, we would really appreciate a review and rating on Amazon. Pliny the Elder, the Roman historian around 77 AD, wrote about the antipathies and sympathies that exist between plants. So some plants like each other and some don't. Right. And other historians at the time wrote about the relationship between plants. Well, they didn't have the internet. (laughs) The ancient Romans planted roses in their grape vineyards as an early warning for powdery mildew fungus and they found that roses are more attractive to powdery mildew than grapes. Exciting. If you're new to gardening or planning a new garden, companion planting can help reduce or eliminate insecticides needed to control insects in your garden. What is companion planting? So this is when different types of plants are grown next to each other to benefit one or more of the plants, Some plants, for example, will attract insects, and some will repel insects. The University of North Dakota says marigolds deter beetles, chives and garlic deter aphids, and oregano provides general pest protection in your garden. Interesting. Are there benefits of companion planting? The Old Farmer's Almanac says there are seven benefits to companion planting. So, yes. All right. Certain plants act as an insect repellent or a deterrent to pests that can damage garden plants. Some plants will attract beneficial insects to your garden, so they pollinate plants or they eat pests. Large plants can shade plants that need protection from direct sunlight. Plants can also protect neighboring plants from the wind. Right, like asparagus can be used like a windbreak for peppers that don't like wind. Plants like corn and sunflowers can be used to support plants like cucumbers and beans. Some plants can absorb certain substances from the soil to help neighboring plants. And some plants like legumes make nitrogen more available in the soil. What is a legume? It's a type of vegetable like peas, beans, and peanuts, and they can take nitrogen from the air and convert it into a chemical form that plants can easily absorb, which reduces the amount of fertilizer you need, and at the end of the season, if you work these plants into the soil, you'll get even more nitrogen into the soil. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty well. Plants with long tap roots like carrots, beets, parsnip, and radishes draw up nutrients into the topsoil which benefits shallow-rooted plants. What's a taproot? A taproot is a large main root that has smaller roots that grow off the primary root. Hmm. The last benefit is some plants suppress weeds. Hmm. And you can go to almanac.com, it's A-L-M-A-N-A-C dot com, and in the search bar, type in companion planting, and they have some really good articles to help you with your garden. Cool. The University of Minnesota has some research-backed benefits of companion planting. What do they say? They say plants with large roots like carrots or potatoes help break up compacted soil so more air and water gets deeper into the soil. Mm -hmm. Deep-rooted melons and tomatoes will pull up water and nutrients to benefit neighboring plants, which is pretty wild. Marigold, onion, and nasturtium helps reduce cabbage worms. Marigolds and basil are effective at reducing thrips in tomatoes. What is thrip? So this is a tiny winged insect that feeds on plants. Hmm. By planting blue Hubbard squash, you can attract cucumber beetles away from your other squash, pumpkins, and melons. So is it a sacrificial plant? Right, or they call it a trap plant. T-R-A-P. Experts say you can use a trap plant or trap plants on the edge of your garden to draw insects and pests away from the other plants. And then you can use insecticides on those plants rather than spraying your edible plants. Cool. Yeah. 
The University of Minnesota says planting marigolds and nasturtiums along squash will help repel squash bugs and cucumber beetles. Sage repels carrot fly and cabbage moths. And they say plant basil next to tomatoes to repel white flies, mosquitoes, spider mites, and aphids. The Old Farmer's Almanac says nasturtiums draw aphids away from beans and nasturtiums attract other insects, protecting neighboring plants. What is it? It's a flower, and every part of it is edible. So you can eat the stem, you can eat the flower and the leaves, hmm. and it's spelled N-A-S-T-U-R-T-I-U-M-S. Exciting. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. So when I was doing the research for this episode, okay. I kept seeing the three sisters planting referenced. Right. Can you explain what that is? So Northwestern State University says the Three Sisters Companion Planting was used by Native Americans. In one of their legends, corn, beans, and squash were a gift from the gods. They should be grown together, eaten together, and celebrated together. Hmm. Corn gives the beans something to climb up on, and the beans help stabilize the corn in windy conditions. The beans take nitrogen from the air, and some gets released into the soil. Bacterial colonies on the bean's roots turn it into a form that can be easily absorbed by the plants, like the corn and squash. Hmm. The large leaves of the squash shades the soil, keeping it cooler and reducing evaporation of moisture in the soil and helping to prevent weeds. Cool. The Modern Farmer website at modernfarmer.com, it's M O D E R N. F-A-R-M-E-R dot com recommends if you're planting corn, beans, and squash together, pick a sweet corn that matures to at least six feet in height. That way the beans can grow taller and not overwhelm the corn. How tall can corn grow? Popcorn corn grows three to eight feet in height. And you know, there's only one type of corn that will pop, which is popcorn corn. (laughs) Sweet corn can grow four to seven feet in height, and field corn for livestock grows 12 to 16 feet. The Guinness World Record for the tallest sweet corn was grown in New York, and it was 48 feet two inches tall. Wow. (laughs) Crazy. That didn't happen in Illinois? (laughs) Or Iowa? (laughs) Only use pole or vine-type beans, because bush beans don't climb. Hmm. Use a winter variety of squash, which grows on vines that spread across the ground. How can you make a Three Sisters garden? So Modern Farmer has a garden plan. They recommend building a circular mound of soil about five feet in diameter and amend the soil. So you're going to add compost to that area and till it into the ground a few inches. You want to end up with a finished bed about six inches tall with tapered sides. Mm -hmm. You're going to plant the corn first. You're going to sow the seeds eight inches apart, and you're going to create a three-foot diameter in the center of the bed. When the corn is six to eight inches tall, then you're going to plant bean seeds on the inside of that circle of corn, one seed three inches from each corn stalk. Okay. Then you're going to plant the squash on the outside of that corn circle near the edge of the bed. You want to keep the seeds about 12 inches from the corn stalks and space the squash seeds 24 inches apart. As the beans grow, you're going to direct them towards the nearest corn stalk, and you can use garden twine to help encourage them to climb up the corn and help support them. Jute twine is natural and biodegradable jute, J-U-T-E. Some top-rated twine companies for garden twine is Nutseen. It's N-U-T-S-C-E-N-E. They were founded in 1922 in Scotland. Burpee, B-U-R-P-E-E. They started in 1876. And Vigoro, V-I-G-O-R-O. If you're making multiple beds, give plenty of room between them because some squash can grow up to 10 feet wide. Wow. When should you plant your seeds? Northern Illinois University says you can sow your seeds from spring through June, and corn should be planted in several rows to ensure pollination, and a 10-foot by 10-foot square space is the minimum they're recommending for pollination. Hmm. How much sunlight is needed for the Three Sisters Garden? 
Northern Illinois University says choose a site that gets six to eight hours of direct sunlight, and they recommend amending the soil with plenty of compost. Mark off three 10-foot rows five feet apart. In these rows, you're going to create five circular mounds, and you're going to alternate what's in each mound. So in one mound, you're going to have squash. In the next mound, you're going to have corns and beans, and then you're going to have squash, corns, and beans, so you're alternating. The raised mounds for planting should be five feet from the center of the next mound, and the mound should be 18 inches across. You're going to put four corn seeds in the mounds for corn in a six-inch square. When the corn is four inches tall, you're going to plant your beans and squash. You're going to put four bean seeds in each corn mound about three inches away from the corn, and then you're going to put three squash seeds in each squash mound, and you're going to keep those seeds four inches apart. When the squash starts to grow, you're going to thin them to two plants per mound. Hmm. I spoke to Simply Grow, and they have some tips for companion planting. They say marigolds make great companion plants for all vegetable gardens because they repel aphids and beetles. Grow corn next to beans. Corn stalks will act as a trellis for your beans. They say not only do tomatoes and basil taste great together, but they grow great together. Growing basil next to tomatoes will yield better tomato crops as well as repel bugs. Cool. Rosemary and sage deter carrot flies, making them great companion plants for carrots. Plant thyme next to cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts, and you'll deter cabbage worms. And you can check out Simply Grow at simplygrow.com. It's S-I-M-P-L-Y-G-R-O.com. They have natural and organic fertilizers on their website, and they carry Old Farmer's Almanac products. Fun. Some top-rated organic fertilizers and plant food come from Dr. Earth. It's capital D-R, capital E-A-R-T-H, Job's, J-O-B-E-S, Espoma, E-S-P-O-M-A, Down to Earth Fertilizer, it's D-O-W-N-T-O, capital E-A-R-T-H, and Old Farmer's Almanac. You're not going to smell that. O-L-D, capital F-A-R-M-E-R-S, capital A-L-M-A-N-A-C. Remember mosquito dunks? (laughs) Dunks, (laughs) D-U-N-K-S. The University of West Virginia has a list of popular garden plants and what to plant next to them. Let's cover some. For asparagus, plant tomato, basil, and parsley next to it. Mm -hmm. For beans, plant catnip, corn, cucumber, and radish. For cabbage, plant sage, dill, and nasturtiums. For cantaloupe, use corn and sunflowers. For celery, plant onions, tomatoes, and nasturtiums. For corn, plant beans, peas, pumpkins, and cucumber. And squash. Yes, and squash. For cucumber, plant beans, corn, peas, radishes, and marigolds. For eggplant, plant beans and marigolds. For lettuce, carrot, radish, and cucumber. For peppers, plant basil. For onions, plant beets, carrots, and lettuce. For Irish potatoes, beans, corn, peas, and marigolds. You know, the healthiest potato is the red potato. Hmm. It has the highest level of vitamins, minerals, and healthy phytochemicals. Exciting. Next to radish, plant onions. Next to spinach, plant strawberries. Next to squash, plant nasturtium, corn, radish, and marigolds. Next to strawberries, plant bush beans, spinach, and lettuce. And next to tomato, parsley, dill, and basil. Some top-rated seed companies are Burpee, B-U-R-P-E-E, Eden Brothers, E-D-E-N, capital B-R-O-T-H-E-R-S, Botanical Interests, B-O-T-A-N-I-C-A-L, capital I-N-T-E-R-E-S-T-S, 
Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, and Baker Creek is B-A-K-E-R, capital C-R-E-E-K, Park Seed, P-A-R-K, and Simply Grow, S-I-M-P-L-Y, capital G-R-O. Do you have anything else to add? If you're starting a garden and picking the plants you want to grow, do some research on what plants are beneficial to grow around them, and that's going to help you get good results and make gardening easier. Fun. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 16 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, Fix It Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.